Hello and welcome to this, well, relatively short video on the multi-track recorder. Um, I've had a few people request me go over some of the new features, such as the new EQ that I added per, per track EQ, and the it, multiple ins and multiple outs, and how to use those within AUM. So let's start by having a look at the EQ, which I added a couple of versions ago. Now if you take a look above the uh, mixer faders, you'll see EQ buttons. If you don't see the EQ buttons, hit the effects button at the top and you can toggle between what you want to appear there. In this case, EQ was there. So if we press the EQ button, we get up a EQ pane. Now let's just uh, dismiss that for a minute and let's just uh, preview this loop. Now to me that guitar track sounds a little bit dull and can obviously be livened up a bit with a bit of INDQ. So press the EQ button on track 1 to bring up the EQ dialog. Now you've got three bands here and I'm going to hit the blue button for the high band. There's low, medium and high. And we can adjust the frequency, the bandwidth and um, the gain on that particular frequency band. So when we find something we like we can go on to track 2 and maybe add a bit of bass on track 2 on that bass drum. The observant of you will probably have noticed the shelf tab as well, which can be used to uh, add low and high shelf filters. Okay, now to the big one that everyone's been asking for. Ever since AUM added multiple ins and outs, people have been wanting to know how do we use them. So if we take the guitar from the previous example and we want to output that to say bus 2 and add an effect such as black hole, how do we do that? Well if we hit the FX button we can toggle to show the bus, the channel bus. And we can change that bus by just clicking on the bus buttons above the mixer. In this case I've chosen bus 2 but we could have output to any of the 8 buses. And as you can see if I press play on the transport here we hear nothing. So create a new audio channel in AUM and then click as though we're adding an instrument but instead pick the multibus audio unit instances and pick multitrack from that menu. Now if you click on the little label beside multitrack you can see we've got eight buses here. But since we were outputted to bus two within multitrack we need to pick up from bus two in this audio channel. And now if we go and press play, we can hear the sound of the guitar coming through that secondary channel. So let's go and add a reverb to that channel and have a play. So we'll use my visual reverb and just have a play with that. Now since multi-track uh, supports up to eight tracks per instance, um, we, we could output the other seven buses in the same way and have a separate eight audio buses there to put uh, individual effects on or we could output uh, multiple tracks to the same bus and add a global effect to multiple tracks okay so now we've covered multiple outputs let's have a look at multiple inputs and why we might need them now the way we actually made recordings within AUM before was to install an instance of multi-track as an insert effect on another track and we'd record the instrument that was passing through. We don't have to do that anymore. We can now install a static version of multi-track on an audio channel and then route audio to it using one of the input buses. Now if you open up multi-track and have a look above the input button you'll notice there's an input bus option with buses 1, 2 and 3. Bus 1 is a standard input which would record anything passing through multi-track. Bus 2 and 3 are external. So you'll notice I've got a second uh, audio channel here with a, an instrument attached going through black hole. And we're going to divert this to multi-track's bus 2 input so that it can be recorded. To do this, uh, proceed as though you're adding another insert effect and instead pick multibus audio unit instances and from that menu pick multi-track 
Now you see an icon appear that looks like another instance of multi-track but it's in fact a redirection and when we click on the label next to that we can see the uh, inputs and outputs from multi-track. Now if I play on the MIDI keyboard here you'll notice no sound because we need to pick pass through from this. We also need to make sure we've got the same bus selected in there as we've got selected in multi-track. Now if I press the record monitor button in multi-track and play we don't see anything appearing on the meters because we haven't. We need to select the right bus input, in this case bus 2. And now we can see audio is appearing on the uh, meters in the mixer so we can just press play now and start actually recording something. Okay, now press stop. We can see that we've actually recorded something. Uh, so let's just make sure it's there. Play it back. Okay, I think that just about covers inputs and outputs. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe.